All right, so I couldn't help myself but do this video. Everybody's after J.K. Rowling. Everybody's after her. You know, she was beloved by the left for so long, and then all of a sudden now she's like the enemy, and they have to destroy her at all costs, even if it's destroying people's childhood nostalgia when it comes to Harry Potter. They don't want the game coming out. They don't want anything that has to do with her name on it. They want Harry Potter books banned and burned and everything else under the sun. Now, according to this article, Harry Potter's worst mistake is serving up magic with fat shaming. Oh, first, you know, I remember when she made uh, Dumbledore gay. When she come out and she said gay, they're like, oh, great representation and things along those lines. And I'm like, eh. Maybe I could I could see it, of course, in a little bit. So like that was like one thing that didn't bother me too much. But this whole thing of after the fact and just going along with the trend of the day and what's acceptable of the day. If you really were going to be progressive at the time, you would have made Dumbledore gay in the books. I mean that would that that personally, if you would have done that, I would give you. A, all the credit in the world, J.K. Rowling, but you can't come out after all these years and be like, well, Dumbledore is gay, and so therefore, you know, applaud me on it, and she did, and everybody did. And now, of course, you know, because of her her opinions on trans rights and uh, so forth, she has, um, she is now the left's enemy. So now, it's not just about the trans issue, it's about... Fat shaming. Let's go ahead and let's read this article. I'm curious to know about this article here. There is no denying the Harry Potter franchise, cultural impact, and overwhelming popularity. But as time has passed, certain aspects have aged poorer than others, especially in the aftermath of author J.K. Rowling's repeated transphobic comments, which fat shaming doesn't have anything to do with. Many fans are returning to the franchise with a much more critical eye and examining the tropes and stereotypes with a different lens, which means they're looking for something to complain about. Uh, one of the glaring issues with the series overall is its repeated instance of fat phobia and fat characters defined by hurtful stereotypes. The most obvious and difficult to ignore instance of fat phobia is in the depiction of the Dursley family, specifically Vernon and Dudley, Harry's uncle and cousin. There is repeated emphasis placed on their weight with connections drawn between their appearance and their overall goodness, which, first off, no. No, I'm not buying that. Not buying that at all. Of course, they might have described them in such a way but that literally had nothing to do with, you know, their goodness or him saying, well, they're fat, so therefore... They're bad? Is that what they're trying to say? And I'm speaking as a fat person. Like, hey, I'm part of the, that community. So I'm like, hey, this doesn't offend me a bit. And it didn't back then, it didn't now. Uh, Dudley is different from Harry because he is fat and cruel. Whereas Harry is scrawny and kind. No, 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 no. No, 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 you can't do that. Dudley is a spoiled brat. He's the only child think you get to see it a little bit i think it uh, i don't think it made it into the movies but it was like one of those extended scenes where uh dudley's mom is talking about you know of course her sister who was uh harry potter's mom and talks about you know you know how she felt towards her um and really i guess maybe the loss of her sister really made her really hold tight to her own child um and he was spoiled he was a brat but he lost, but what they're, what they're forgetting is he lost a lot of weight in this, and he was a douchebag for the most part. Like, he still was. I mean, yes, of course, maybe at the very end there was, like, that one moment, but he still was like a jerk. Like, I mean, it, it blows my mind how they're trying to change that so much. Dudley is different. Uh, yeah, I already read that. All right. So... Even when Dudley is traumatized and humiliated by a grown wizard, the punchline of the situation is that he ends up with a pig's tail and an incomplete transformation since apparently he already looked enough like a pig. It's not his cruelty towards Harry uh, that is turned back on him, 
but a crack about his weight and appearance because it's funny. Because it's funny. Uh, what was he supposed to, like, what was he supposed to give him, like, devil horns? Is that really going to be something that's going to be appropriate for this, uh, you know, for that age group? People totally, totally forget that the first Harry Potter book is really for kids. Like, it's really for kids. I know over time it did kind of grow. And there were more adult things. But that first Harry Potter book is a straight-up kids book. That's the reason why when I hear, like, it's being taught in, like, you know, certain high schools, I'm like, why is it even in a high school library? Like, I love it. Don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm a grown man. I still love it. But it's for kids. That that book is straight up for kids. Um, I don't know. It just blows my mind. Anyways, um, wizards are the heroes of Harry Potter, and the Dursleys are described as the furthest thing from wizards there could be. At the same time, there are examples of fat wizards being evil too. Of all the marauders, Peter Pettigrew is the lone traitor and servant of Voldemort. Now, okay, Peter Pettigrew was a coward. That's what she was trying to get out of that. Not his weight. Peter Pettigrew, she was trying to get, was a coward. He was somebody that tried to fit in. That that meant a lot to him to fit in at all costs. He was looking to fit in for protection, is what he was looking at. There was nothing about his weight that really stood out for, and I've read those books a million times, and I don't remember anything about that. Um... And he is the fat member of the group. It doesn't get much more blatant than equating fatness with being evil. Oh my freaking goodness. Really? Though the Harry Potter series does have examples of heroic characters who are fat, they still fall victim to harmful stereotypes. Molly Weasley, for example, is a fat and well-loved character. But she often just fills the role of a mother character, and her identity doesn't really exist beyond the uh, that except... When she is described as a fat woman, no, no. Molly Weasley actually played a big role in that Harry Potter franchise. She really uh, made Harry Potter who he is because it was his her love and affection that turned him, you know, into the Harry Potter, grew up to be the man that turned out to be the savior. Uh, I, I love how when it doesn't fit their narrative, they, they say, well, she's not really a big issue with that. Well, neither was Peter Pettigrew in a lot of ways. Like, yes, I totally get it. He had that one moment. But other than that, he was a nothing character. He really, truly was. Out of all the Marauders, he played the least uh, the least in the books and in the movies. Like, he just was. Uh, I mean, I mean, you know, you have, you have uh, uh, Harry Potter's father, of course, you know, played a, a big role. Well, just really, I'm not even going to go through all that. You know, you have Lupin and so forth. The idea that they have, uh, that they try to, we, when it doesn't fit with their narrative, they they try to say, well, these characters they weren't really that important anyways. But actually, they kind of were. Um, anyways, let's see where was that. Uh, she is often controlling, and <laughs> first off, in I don't even remember them even describing her as a fat woman. I, I mean, I don't ever remember Wal uh, Molly Weasley ever being described as a fat woman or that being emphasized in any form or fashion. She is often controlling, overprotective, and somewhat of a killjoy, which all have links to fat phobic characters. I don't uh, I always thought it was the 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 links to those things where fat people were supposed to be jolly. But now they're killjoys. I don't remember that. I've never heard of that one before. Particularly uh, fat mothers. In no, that's just mothers in general. That's just mothers in general that are usually portrayed that way. Uh, in the end, she gets a moment of bravery, bravery and hero, uh, heroism during the Battle of Hogwarts. But even that moment is completely intertwined with her identity as a mother, because that was the point of her character. She loved her children. She had lost one of her children. She wasn't going to lose another one. She was going to fight to the death for it. That's what made her a great character. Sorry, her character wasn't because there because she was fat or because she was a woman. 
her character was there because she was a a a good person, a mother. That was what she was there for. Period. There was nothing more to that. Uh, Hagrid is another hero of the story, but he's often portrayed as overly emotional and a little dim-witted. If well-intentioned, his size is the defining factor of who he is, and it others uh, him within the wizarding world because he's not like everyone else. Uh, not exactly. There's reasons that he was separated. You know, one, he was blamed for a lot of things he didn't do, but it wasn't because he was fat. It was because he was dim-witted. Now, if you want to go down that route, you might could. Uh, he was a punching bag uh, that people could attack in that way, but it wasn't because he was a fat oaf or anything like that. It's because of, you could say, I, I could I could go with the dim-witted, well-intentioned thing, but I'm not going to go with the fat thing. It's not just that he's tall. It is specifically that he is large overall. Well, he's part giant, so yeah. There's kind of that thing that they're kind of maybe leaving out. Um, not just that he's fat, but he's a freaking giant. Like a real giant. <laughs> Being dim and emotional is a stereotype. Oh my goodness, what is the stereotypes? It's the stereotypes that fat people are 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 uh are overweight people are uh sad and emotional, or are they happy and cheerful, or are they mean and unhospitable like where are they getting these stereotypes exactly they can't be everything and they're not a freaking stereotype if they're everything that's on the board if everything goes back to being a stereotype i mean it's just crazy that's belittling if there's anything that's belittling about this um this particular being dim and emotional and stereotype often Often attributed to fat characters and his belittling. No, you trying to say everything's a stereotype is belittling. Uh, though in the new film series Fantastic Beasts, the representation of fat characters has much improved. It's still not particularly good. There was uh, there has been an adjustment from the earlier connection of fat equals bad, but Jacob Kowalski's identity is still firmly in the sidekick position. So... So the first part of this article went from, well, they're known as bad. And then, of course, then they get to Hagrid. And then she, this, this author's like, oh, we got to change it around a little bit. Um, and so they're not always bad. There's good ones in here. There's Kowalski. And, of course, there's Hagrid. So, yeah, yeah, so you know, listen to the first part of me, uh, to, of my statements where I said, oh, well, fat characters are deemed as bad. And, and evil because of the Dursleys. Uh, but then there's Hagrid and then there's Kowalski. So then that whole narrative, the, this writer, this author of this, literally destroyed himself when it come to this. Uh, everything that he's trying to put out there, he tears down himself. Um, uh, additionally, his interests and identity are deeply tied to food. He wants to be a baker, and he first falls in love with magic uh, and with Queenie when she uses magic to make dinner and dessert. In the new Secrets of Dumbledore trailer, well, it could be because she's hot, too. Uh, specific emphasis is given to him eating in the Great Hall to further drive his connection to food as a defining character trait. Despite the diversity of his fan base, diversity is not a strength of the popular Harry Potter franchise. Actually, is in a lot of ways uh fat men uh fat fans and uh other reviewing the series with a more critical lens are drawing attention to the fact that it has a serious problem with fat phobic tropes uh that tro that doesn't mean that the franchise can't still be enjoyed but it's a problem that shouldn't be ignored it just shouldn't be brought up because it's not true how about that does, does that work for you because i kind of feel like that's the narrative that should be gone here because you literally went from at the beginning of this article stating that J.K. Rowling was using this trope of fat characters being evil, like the Dursleys. And then she had to talk about Hagrid. And then so no longer were they evil. They, had, they, they I guess, could be good too. They're just dim-witted. 
And then, of course, you know, she went on to Kowalski, who is a fun character. You know, that's usually what happens in films. I don't know if this person's ever watched a film uh, in, in, in her life uh, because there's always that setup guy. There's always the, the hero that's really, you know, he's strong and courageous. And then there's the sidekick. And the sidekick is usually funny. Doesn't matter if that character is overweight or not. I mean, look at uh, Weasley, for instance. I mean, he was he was not overweight. He got the he got uh, Hermione for goodness sakes. And there's you know sidekicks aren't always uh, uh, the uh, have to be overweight, but they also do not have to be. Um, you know, you know, they usually are funny. Let's just put it that way. So, I mean, the whole idea that the side characters on this played a role as in being funny or whatever kind of other thing like that or fit whatever kind of narrative or stereotype that this author is trying to portray is absolutely ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. I never heard so many stereotypes used for fat people in my entire life. And that's coming from, like I said, a fat person. Sorry, I can use that word. I am one of them. Uh, so at the end of the day, yeah, this person don't know what they're talking about. I had to read this article simply because I just thought it was so outrageous. Let me know what y'all think in the comments down below. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Take care.